Father, we thank you for bringing us together again with our online family. We ask that you bless us and speak to us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into everything that we'll do today. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, 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 welcome to CICC Online. It's always a pleasure to fellowship with you and to meet you online. I pray that you're keeping well and I know that the Lord has been with you and is sustaining you. And we are physically at a distance, but socially we are not. You know, we are not socially distancing. We are physically distancing because socially we are fellowshipping online. So don't be discouraged. You are not alone. We are all in this together. And even though we may all be having different challenges, different struggles, facing different issues, the same God is taking care of each of us, is meeting each of us at a point of our need, is speaking to us individually and collectively. And I pray that your ears and your eyes will be open to hear what the Lord is saying and to see what God is doing in your life. Don't dismiss the little things. Don't dismiss the little directions and promptings that the Holy Spirit gives to you. It will lead you to a good place. And I pray that today's time will be a blessing to you, wherever you may be, wherever you may be, whether you're a doctor, a nurse, you know, hospital worker, grocery worker, or you are home, working from home, or you have you have been made, you have been fellowed, or you're out of work, whatever it is, I pray that the word of God will bless you. And I pray that we will all begin to put things in better perspective. You know, I realize that some people are getting so anxious about staying at home and being at home. But spend, spend a minute and think about those who have to go and work in the hospital so that lives will be safe. And every day they go to work, they are also at the risk of catching the virus, and yet they keep going because it's their calling, it's their mandate, and it's their responsibility. And when you put that into perspective, you realize that the, your boredom at home is absolutely nothing compared to the risk at their stake. So what am I saying? All of us, let's stop mourning, let's minimize the mourning, and let's begin to appreciate God, and thank God, and become more grateful. And as we always do, I just want us to start by spending some time in prayer. Just lift up your voice and just thank God that he has brought us together again. Just thank God that you still have life, that you still have strength. Just begin to thank the Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We hallow your name. We ask that you will help us. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your help. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you that you continue to encourage us. We thank you for everybody who is online. Father, I pray that your hand will continue to be on them. Thank you for all that you do in our lives and in our families and in our homes. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Makasha taraba, kora balababa. Makabasha taraba lababa, kara balababa. Oh, makasha taraba lababa lababa. Oh, ramashika tarabo. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for all the help you have brought our way. We thank you for your provision in our homes, in our lives. We thank you. We thank you that we keep waking up, we keep rising up. Thank you for your angels that keep watching over us. We are protected because of you. We are covered because of you. We are strengthened because of you. We bless you, Lord. We hallow your name. Oh, Makaba Shotoro Bebe. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We bless you, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord. We thank you for our families, Lord. We thank you for our families, Lord. We thank you for our friends, Lord. We thank you for our neighbors, Lord. 
We thank you for the nurses and the doctors and the grocery workers and the bus drivers and everyone that is keeping us going. We thank you. Father, we thank you for our pastors and our ministers and our shepherds and our leaders, O oh Lord. We thank you for all those who are volunteering in different sectors and in different ways, O oh Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. That you have not left us without help, but you have provided help for us. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. We are blessed, even in this season, we are blessed. We thank you, O oh Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 103, I'm going to read verse 1 to 5. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. And may I never forget the good things God does for me. Indeed, may we never forget the good things that God does for us. He forgives all our sins and he heals all our diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. And he fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. I just want us to spend a few moments. Every home has a different challenge. Every person has their own personal issue and what they're struggling with. But I want you to bring it before the Lord. I want us to lay our burdens, our challenges, our illness, our lack, our need, whatever it is, I want you to lay it before him because he makes provision for us. He provides us with every good things. He heals all our diseases. He gives us tender mercies. He renews our strength like the eagles. Oh, Father, we lay our burdens before you. We lay our challenges before you. We lay our struggles before you. Lord, every problem in every home, every challenge in every home, every sickness in every home, every struggle that every home is going through, Father, we lay it before you, Lord, and we ask that, Lord, you come speedily, Lord. You answer speedily, Lord. Let there be recovery. Let there be recovery. Let there be solution. Let there be answers, O oh Lord. We speak life into homes, Lord. We speak healing into homes, Lord. We speak provision into homes, Lord. Oh, Maka Basha Tarabala Baba. Where there is division, Father, we speak unity, Lord. Where there's confusion, we speak clarity, O oh Lord. Father, where there is depression, Lord, we speak life, Lord. Mako Shatala Baba. Where there is brokenness, we speak wholeness, O Lord. Makabashi Kabato Rabala Baba. Ah, Makarabala. Mako Rebebe. Will the dead bones live again? Yes, they will. They will rise again. They will rise again. They will rise again. Like you said, we are also saying the same. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Let every dead thing arise. Peter said, So and God have I not, but such as I have, I give unto you. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. We speak healing into your homes. We speak healing into the hospitals. We speak healing wherever it is, into the nursing home. We speak healing. We speak healing. It doesn't matter where you are. God can reach you. Father, reach us, O oh Lord. Reach us, O oh Lord. Touch 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 us, O oh Lord. Us, oh Lord. There is nothing stronger. There is no one stronger. There is none mightier than you. There is nothing you cannot do. Mako Shata. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. That which you have done, you will do again. And you are doing it now. We thank you. We thank you for the big testimonies. We thank you for the small testimony. We thank you for the changes, the significant changes, and even the little changes. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for putting bread on our table. We thank you, O oh Lord. 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 Father, for some, they want their wayward children to come back home, to stop taking drugs, to come off drugs, to come off addictions. We drive out every spirit of addiction. We drive it out. We drive it out. We drive it out. We speak sanity. We speak sanity. 
into somebody's son's life, into somebody's daughter's life. Oh, we thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord. Under the authority of the Almighty, we speak it. We speak life. We thank you. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name. You know, one of my greatest desire and my hope is that all these broadcasts we have and every time we spend, I pray that it's helping you to maintain your faith and also to grow your faith. And for some of us, I pray that it is introducing you to this faith in Christ Jesus. That if it's a faith that you've never had, I pray that you will become interested and inquisitive to find out more, to want to know. So reach out to us. We are always here to help you. And if you have black backsliding, what a great opportunity to come back to your God, to your Father. It's never too late. Thank God that he's God. He welcomes us back every single time, you know. But I want to give a word of um, caution. And I pray that our prayer life, our word life, our relationship with God is not just online. I pray that when we go offline, we also spend time in prayer and in the word. We come to augment what you're already doing. Don't let online meetings replace everything else you do when it comes to your relationship with God. It's not right. You know, I want to just encourage you that the healthiness, you know, the accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your personal prayer life and your personal word life. That is how you measure your spiritual health, the healthiness of your spiritual life. It's not based on how long you spend online, but it is how much time you spend personally with God in prayer. Corporate prayer is good. Corporate worship is good. It's great. It's needed. That is where we are sharpened. That is where we are carried. That is where understanding comes. But offline, you must spend time with God. Please, please. I just thought that I needed to stress that and address that, you know, so that we don't become just lazy Christians, but we get better and stronger. So on that note, let's go and have a look at a little message. But before we do that, maybe let's just bow our heads and prepare our hearts for the word. And prepare our hearts for the word. Just bow your heads and say, Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. You're my hiding place, my safe My 
Father, we thank you so much. Indeed, we will exalt you. We will lift your name up. We we'll continue to trust you. You are indeed our safe refuge. You are indeed our hiding place. Come and speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just for a few moments, I just want to introduce a topic and um, I think we're going to treat this topic today and tomorrow, but at least let's get on with it. And um, all I'm going to talk about is quality control. Quality control. Quality control. I think it's time that we bring and maintain some quality in our faith. It's time that we improve the quality of our faith, the quality of our relationship, the quality of our life. Anything that is not controlled eventually becomes ineffective and is generally not consistent. Because if you are not controlling it, then you can't be sure whether it's in right proportion or not. If you are somebody who bakes, you would appreciate that if you don't measure the things right, your cake, hmm, can turn out to be bread. If, you know, for most of us, we were brought up cooking by eyesight. You know, you gauge the salt, you gauge the pepper, you gauge everything. So it can be hit and miss. Today the stew is nice and tomorrow the stew is, is very salty or no salt. Too much pepper, no pepper, because, you know, we are not controlling, we are not controlling the quality of it. So I want us to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read from verse number 13. If it seems we're reading from the NLT, if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. I like the first verse. It's saying that if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. So for those of us who sometimes flash through different, you know, Facebook pages or 
different life and you can say, oh, these people are crazy. Yeah, we are, but it is to the glory of God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for our benefit. Verse 14, either way, either way, Christ's love controls us since we believe that Christ died for all. Either way, Christ's love controls us since we believe that Christ died for all. We also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how different we know him now. This means that anyone who, brings, who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Indeed, in this season, I believe that God is making his appeal through the church. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Amen. We are controlled by Christ's life. What is, the, what is quality control? This is Reverend G's um, definitions and descriptions. So we are going to, I know some of you went to university and you did quality control and all that. Okay, now come to church with me. And this is quality control personified. So the first thing about it is that quality control in your faith, in your life, is maintaining and improving standards by continuously sampling testing and measuring against approved specifications and to correct any significant variations. I'm going to say that again. You see, I know some of you wrote thesis on it. If you had come to me, I would have helped you define it. Maintaining and improving standards by continuous sampling, testing, and measuring against approved specifications and to continuously correct any significant variations. Verse 14 gave us the first basic thing. The approved specification for us is Christ's love. That is the standard. It's Christ's love. That is the standard against which we are controlling everything. And that is the standard which must be met. I want to say this to all of us who are walking in our faith. Do not bring God to your standard, but lift your standard up to God's standard. So if it is Christ's love, then it means that whatever that is, that is what we are aiming towards. And the standards we are talking about we see it in verse 15, 16, 19. Let's look at it. Verse 15 says, He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ. That's the standard, living for Christ. Yeah. Living for Christ. Verse 16 says, So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. We have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. Stop seeing things from a very superficial level. In fact, when we go uh, further up, let's look at um, verse number nine. I want to 
look at verse number 9 in 2 Corinthians, the same scripture that we are looking at. I don't know, when you come online, do you have your Bible with you? Hmm. Or you just sit there and listen? I want you to take your Bible, and as I'm looking for it, you're also looking for it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I want us to just look at verse 9. It has another standard there for us. Whatever technology you use, or if you have a paper, Bible, a book, it's fine. Just open to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. Yeah. It says, so whether we are here in the, this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. 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 Our goal. Paul taught us something. He says that, listen, if I follow on and I'm trying to please men, then I cannot be a servant of God. You, if you want to have it right, the only person you should aim to please is God. And the good thing about it is that when you aim to please God, you end up being good to many. You end up showing Christ's life you end up actually living by that standard that God has set for us. You stop evaluating men from a human point of view, and you will also start walking in the newness of life, that you will live your life for Christ. You will live your life for Christ. You will live your life for Christ. I feel like I'm speaking to somebody who is currently living their life for a certain young lady or a certain young man. Live your life for Christ. Live your life for Christ. Live your life for Christ. You can send the person a message right now on um, you know, Instagram or whatever. I'm just listening to a message. Rev G says that I should live my life for Christ. So when I'm praying, please don't call me. When I'm praying, you call me. I'm not picking up. Amen. Somebody say amen. Quality control. It also means creating an environment which enables you to maintain and improve. It enables you to have another, to maintain and improve your faith, your life, your relationship. You know, we're talking about faith, our life, but can you imagine if there was if we had some level of quality control on even our marriage and our relationship, how amazing it will be. It says that creating an environment which enables you to maintain and improve, which means that there are certain environments that you cannot go through that process. In fact, when you go to most production or manufacturing places, the, where the quality control is done, there is a restricted access temperature, there's, they have to make sure that certain things are the same so that they can measure the results correctly. So in the same way, we need to be able to measure our results correctly. Only maintaining it, anything, anything that you just maintain, eventually it will become obsolete. Those of us who still have, I was going to mention names, but you know, those phones from 2001 and 2002 and two, you know they are obsolete i don't care how you have maintained your phone it can even be brand new in a case not cracked you know but you can't use it you know you can't link it to spotify or you can't go on instagram in fact apart from texting i'm not sure some of those phones can do much so even though you have maintained it so it's not just the maintaining but it's also the improving so what kind of environment are we talking about it means that you must have an environment where learning is taking place, teaching is taking place, you know, uh, correction is taking place, you are monitoring, you are analyzing, you are acknowledging. Because when you have that kind of environment, you can only but have the best. You can only but get better. You can only but make sure that you are always, you know, at least above. But you see, all those things are hard work. Learning, teaching, you know. Most of us even, we just wish somebody will just learn and just tell us, you know, just give me the final answer. We don't give us the process, just, just tell me. 
You know, that is why some people go into the shop and they buy the cake that has almost been done. So as they say pre-packed, when you get home, just put one cup of water and then put it in the tin in the oven is done. Rather than crack two eggs, pour half a cup of flour, add uh, five, 50 gram butter. It's too much hard work. But you see, how can you do things better if you don't want to know more? if you don't want to understand things better. I pray that we will want to get better in a lot of areas of our life. I pray that we'll have a desire to know more. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 11, Paul said, because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard. We work hard. We work hard. If you are in the room with your husband or your wife or your children or your cousin or your housemate or if there's anybody by you you know or if you are in a watch party you know or whatever just tell the people around you that listen listen work hard work hard quality things don't come easy quality things are not lying around you know when the shops are next open and you go into your high street or your Go, go around and you will notice. Shops that sell very cheap things, first of all, you find a lot in the shop. Secondly, security is not so serious. But when you go into another shop where a watch is 5,000 pounds or whatever, you see that there are only three things on display and they are all locked up because of its quality. Yeah. And let me tell you, when you put so much effort in your relationship with God, in trying to be more Christ-like, you are not just going to trample over it. You are not just going to let somebody take it away. You are not going to just discard it because you have put so much into it. So set the right environment for this control. Set the right environment. And what a good time to start setting that right environment because now we all have space and time. We all, most of us, most of us have space and time. So I pray that we will do that. You see, when you maintain and you create the right environment, you minimize the amount of errors that you can make. It will also help you to better define the parameters, you know, and improve those parameters. Because once you know that this is the structure and this is the limits. It helps you to stay within it. Yeah, have parameters over your life. Have, have boundaries beyond which you don't cross. Yeah, yeah, you can take me out for a meal. You can call me. Yeah, you can even, you know, come and visit me, but you are restricted to my living room. You are not married to me. You don't need to see what my bedroom looks like. Have parameters. Yeah, husband and wives have parameters. Yeah, when you're upset, what do you do and what you don't do? Have parameters. Yeah, for those of us who are chasing after so many things, have parameters. Yeah, I'm going to work hard, but it's not going to come at the expense of my relationship with God. It's not going to come at that expense. Yeah, when you're taking a job and they say, yeah, you can work as many hours and as many days, you must say that this three hours on a Sunday, I'm already booked. That is how you maintain and improve the quality of your faith. Yeah, of your faith. And of your health, the same. Have parameters on the food you eat and you don't eat. Have parameters on the food you eat and you don't eat. And the amount of it you eat and you don't eat. You don't want to have, you cannot say you want to have good health and eat every form of junk. You cannot say that. I feel like I've, I've just spoken to somebody. I don't know whether the food in front of you, you're going to throw it away or finish it, and then hopefully from tomorrow you will change your diet. Let me just give you one last point about this quality control that we have stepped into. One of the things that quality control will help you with is that whatever is written on the package will be the same thing that is in the package. 
Because if you have controlled the environment under which that thing has been prepared, then we can be sure that what has been inscribed on the package is what we are going to find in the package. Can you imagine the right on the box, spicy chicken? Then you go and eat the chicken, it's not spicy. They say it's extra hot. You go and try it, you realize that it's not extra hot. You know, you go and buy perfume. I haven't seen some lately, but you see, when I was younger, people used to sell perfumes. I don't know how people's skins did not even deteriorate. Nameless perfumes, so they'll have a name close to a very, you know, prominent uh, fragrance, but maybe one letter is left out. And when you smell it, you know for sure that this is coming from a bad place. Do you, do you get it? Yeah. But you want your life to be such that what you say you are is what it is. And you know, when you buy milk or something, they say best before and they give a date. You're expecting that any time before that date, when you drink it, when you eat it, when you open it, it's going to be in good shape. It's going to be in good quality. So what am I saying? Best before the day you leave this earth what is the quality that we are getting out of you what is it that we are getting out of you newness of life what are we getting out of you let's look at verse 17 verse 20 as we close the bible says this means that anyone who belongs to christ has become a new person the old life is gone a new life has begun so when we open the package we don't expect to see your old life we expect to see a new life because that is what has been written on the package. Verse 20 says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ. When you speak, can people identify it as somebody representing Christ? Last year, I believe, you know, I was preaching and one of the questions I kept asking was that, for whatever reason, if they came to arrest you for being a Christian, will there be enough evidence for them to be able to convict you? Or when they come to arrest you, after they do their search, they realize that actually, no, you're not actually a Christian. Mm. May God have mercy on us. May God have mercy on us. May what is written on the package become what is actually in the package. I just want us to pray and commit ourselves to God. In this season of lockdown, it's going to be a time when we begin to improve the quality of our life, the quality of our faith, the quality of our health, the quality of our relationship. Just pray for yourself, whatever area of your life that you can see that the quality has decreased or is not as you would want it to be. I want you to just pray for yourself. I want you to pray. God will help us. God will help us. God will help us. God will help us. To rise up to the standard of his word. He will give us that grace to rise up to the standard of his word. Like I said, we are not going to bring the word to our standard. The word will always have its standard. But as we strive, and as we maintain, and as we build it up, we are also going to get closer and closer to that standard. Father, we thank you for your word. 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 Jesus, Jesus, how I love you. How I prove you more and more. Jesus, Jesus, pray. Jesus.
just make this prayer over you right now. May the Lord our Father give you grace and peace. May the Lord bless you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms and keep you united to himself. May the Lord shower you with his kindness and give you wisdom and understanding in this season. May you receive an inheritance from the Lord and may everything work out according to God's plan. May you continue to grow in spiritual wisdom and in insight and in the knowledge of God. May your hearts be flooded with light to see and know the incredible greatness of our God's power. In Jesus' name, God bless you and see you again next time.